Have you ever heard of geisha? Some people associate them with low social responsibility, while others see them as educated courtsans. However, the truth is that geishas do not provide intimate services and are considered to be popularizers of traditional Japanese culture. Have you ever wondered what it's like to live a day in the life of a real Japanese geisha? Contrary to popular belief, geishas are not exclusively female, and men can also be geishas. Did you know that geishas were proud of their baldness and blackened teeth, and that they painted their faces with whitewash as a sign of their profession? Let's explore the world of geishas and find out what, if anything, they have in common with escorts. Contrary to popular Western belief, geishas are not prostitutes. In fact, the word daisha comes from the Japanese words ge and sha, meaning art person. Geishas are considered artists who specialize in traditional Japanese culture and entertainment. Unfortunately, after World War II, prostitutes began using the title of geisha to attract American military personnel. Geisha have a rich history dating back to the 17th century and are known for their mysterious beauty and cultural significance. It may come as a surprise, but the first geisha in Japan were actually men. Originally, they were actors in the traditional kabuki theater who dressed up as jesters to entertain people at feasts. However, as Japanese men grew tired of the company of other men, women began to infiltrate the geisha profession. The first woman to be tried for the role of geisha was a former courtesan from Tokyo's red light district, Yoshiwara, in the 18th century. Geisha were originally divided into two categories, shero geisha, or white geisha, who only entertained guests, and karebi geisha, or flipping geisha, who were employed as prostitutes. However, in 1779, Geishas were officially forbidden from engaging in prostitution. To distinguish a true geisha from a call girl, one can look at how the kimono belt is tied. If it is intricately tied at the back, it is a sign of a true geisha, while a call girl's belt would be tied at the front. It's interesting to note that despite the shift towards female geishas, men have still occasionally taken on the role. In fact, some believe that male geishas have a certain charm that cannot be replicated by their female counterparts. In the 19th century, the geisho creed was, we sell art, not the body. Geishas are considered live works of art and have spent years mastering various arts, including music, dance, and calligraphy. The painstaking lessons lasted a lifetime, regardless of age. Geishas were required to play music every day and were especially renowned for writing melancholic songs and performing slow, graceful dances full of complex symbolism. It took years of practice to acquire these skills. Girls who entered geisha school began as maids and then worked their way up to the rank of apprentice. They were easily recognized by their age and clothing, which included kimonos with long sleeves and sandals with tinkling bells up to 15 centimeters tall. In order to avoid looking ridiculous, geisha schools didn't accept girls taller than 160 centimeters. The day of the geisha school girls began at around 8 a.m. and consisted of dance and music lessons Aikbana and other arts. Classes didn't end until 6 p.m., and the training was so rigorous that it would be illegal today. Geishas also learned how to take care of their bodies and hair, visiting a hairdresser once a week and sleeping on wooden pillows to keep their hair in place. In Western culture, the concept of geisha is often associated with a very specific idea of beauty. When we think of a geisha, the first image that comes to mind is usually a face covered in whitewash. However, in reality, only young apprentices and the youngest geishas in their early years would walk around with such white faces during the day. Modern face powder is now almost harmless to the skin, but until the 20th century, geishas often suffered from lid poisoning as the white makeup was made using lead whitewash. To remove the makeup, they used a remedy made of bird excrement. Adult geisha would only cover their faces in white paint for special occasions, and their daily makeup was muted and not much different from that of ordinary women. Once a geisha had achieved the highest level of mastery, she would abandon the use of white face paint altogether. Overall, the beauty of geishas lies not just in their makeup, but in the intricate art forms they have mastered and the unique way in which they embody Japanese cultural traditions. So, how can one identify a geisha? There is another reliable way to recognize a geisha, which is the bald spot located on the top of their head. This is something geishas receive as apprentices, where a strand of hair is pulled so tightly back that over the years, the hair never grows back in that spot. Geishas proudly referred to this as a medal, as it indicated the many years of training they had undergone. 
At work, they covered the bald spot with a wig or comb, which was a common practice among geishas. Another notable feature of a geisha's appearance was her black teeth. While this trait may seem dubious by Western standards, it was considered a mark of beauty in Japan, achieved by dyeing the teeth with a special paste. However, the dye caused a less than pleasant odor and could damage the teeth. To prevent this, geishas would apply a film over their teeth to strengthen the enamel and protect against damage. Geishas also had a unique approach to eyebrow grooming. They would completely remove their natural brows and then draw them back in using a pencil, placing them above their original position. The shape of the brows was crucial as it needed to be perfect and resemble a crescent moon. If the shape was not perfect, the makeup would have to be removed and started over. Overall, the geisha's approach to beauty was meticulous and distinctive, reflecting a rich cultural tradition that continues to inspire fascination and admiration today. Another challenge that geishas faced was the restrictive nature of their clothing. To truly understand the difficulty of wearing a kimono, one might imagine pulling down a bath towel tightly over their chest and pulling another towel tightly over their legs and knees to simulate the tightness of the kimono hem. Moreover, it is important to wear beach flip-flops to mimic the difficulty of walking in traditional wooden sandals. Finally, imagine having to kneel down whilst holding a tray, a common task for jai shas during their work. This combination of physical challenges made the job of a gai sha incredibly demanding, requiring not only beauty and grace, but also strength and resilience. In summary, being a gai sha involved more than just learning traditional arts and looking beautiful. It required a great deal of physical effort and endurance as well. A surprising fact about gai shas is that they were in highest demand at an older age, typically between 50 to 60 years old. At this point in their careers, Geishas were considered to be more beautiful, intelligent, and experienced. This was because their main job was to provide companionship and engage in subtle conversation with men. Geishas would retire from their profession if they got married, but if they wanted to continue working, they could do so for as long as they wished. One remarkable example of a long-serving Geisha is Yuko Asakusa, currently the world's oldest working Geisha. She worked till 91 years old. She began her career at age 13 and continues to be in high demand all life, particularly among famous politicians and wealthy businessmen who don't mind paying a premium for her services. Let's go back to Geisha school. After classes have ended around 6 p.m., young Geishas and students apply their makeup and change into their working kimonos before heading off to banquets. Dressing a Geisha is a complex process that requires the assistance of a specially designated man who is the only person allowed into the living quarters. Since geishas don't eat at the banquet, they have a hearty dinner before starting their workday. Typically, their workday extends well into the night, and some banquets can last until the morning. At the banquet, geishas act as master of ceremonies and entertainers, providing guests with a traditional Japanese-style dinner along with dancing and musical performances reflecting the rich cultural heritage of Japan. At 18 years old, a geisha was eligible to find a patron who would cover her costs, including clothing and boarding. History suggests that such men were supposed to be merely be patrons, but they often became lovers. If a geisha had a powerful patron, he could promote her popularity, leading to great success in her career. For aspiring geishas without influential connections, success could be challenging to achieve. While geishas are often associated with parties and entertainment, the job is an arduous one that lacks private time. At best, a geisha may have a few hours to sleep after a banquet before classes start again. In reality, being a geisha was a demanding, labor-intensive profession that required a great deal of patience, skill, and dedication to succeed. In summary, the reality of being a geisha was far more complex and challenging than the stereotypes and myths that surround it. Despite the profession's great prestige, it was not a glamorous life requiring women to work tirelessly while suppressing their personal desires and aspirations. Now you've learned another side of the lives of Japanese beauties, and if you want to hear even more interesting stories, subscribe to the channel and stay in touch.